If you look just at the Quran, you will get the indication that you can have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. The reason why it's haram to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old is not found in the Quran at all. If you just read the Quran, it is halal, it would just it would be halal to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. Chapter 65, verse 4. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us who you can divorce and who you cannot divorce. And then he says, Wallahilam ya hidden. And the ones who had never been pubescent before. And by the way, this is very important, yeah? I want all Muslims to be aware of this. The reason why we don't have sexual intercourse with five-year-olds and six-year-olds and seven-year-olds or whatever is not because of puberty. Wait a minute, what did you say? It's not because of puberty because that verse in the Quran actually says Lam yahidn. They never had puberty before. You can't go around that. The Quran doesn't say, doesn't say anywhere in the Quran that the woman has to be pubescent. I dare you to find one verse in the Quran where it says you're not allowed to marry someone based on harm, or you're not allowed to have sexual intercourse based on harm, or you're not allowed to marry someone based on puberty. Get me one verse in the Quran which says the woman has to be pubescent. You know in the Quran it says, It says you're not allowed to marry your mom. It says you're not allowed to marry your sister, your auntie. Where does it say you're not allowed to marry a, a prepubescent? I'm looking for one verse that you, you can say, you pinpoint it and say this is where it says prepubescent marriage or whatever is not allowed. So if you're Quran alone, you're still towards pedophilia and a severe type of pedophilia, a wife abuse, a severe type of wife abuse. But when we say it, we are Islamophobic. Stay away from Islam. <laughs> because we all know that Islam is true, right? But they're not authorized by God. They, they're, they're created by It man. says in their book that they are. I could write a book and say that this is, uh, this is God speaking. That's different from uh, uh, exactly yes. you just hit the nail yes. on the head dude Woo. that's exactly right watch as this young man gets deliverance the demon is manifesting and wants to attack the pastor god has bought you with a price and freedom is a gift to all the that's a beard Throw that away right now! Nope. Stop! Throw that away! You are angry. I am angry! That's a sin! Correct. Throw that beer away right now! No. Throw it away! No! Throw it away! Stop! No! If I get married in the United States, I am not getting married legally. The marriage system is built for the women to be able to do anything that she wants and receive child support for that. Meaning men, the system is against you. If she decides one day, oh, it's time to separate, to get divorced, she gets half of your wealth. And there are many loopholes through prenups that even if you do create a prenup, she can get past them. Oh, he forced me to sign it. And many other reasons. To my brothers that are thinking about get ma getting married, Beware of getting married legally 
in the United States. Do the nikah and I'm done, sister. <coughs> Firstly, um, thank you so much for letting me come here today to speak to you. I know that what my son has done is disrespectful. Um, he didn't have any malicious intent, um, but he's a very, very silly 14-year-old boy um, who does have some challenges. He, he does suffer with high-functioning autism. It means that socially he doesn't always realise what is appropriate and what's not appropriate. Um, and on this occasion, he has been completely disrespectful. He hasn't understood um, how sacred your holy book is. Um, he actually, after the incident occurred, he realised he had offended a, a Muslim boy who was quite a good friend of his. Um, he, off his own back, did send an apology to that boy um, and said that he realised that he'd been disrespectful. Um, he told me immediately when I got home from work that night what he'd done. Um, I told him he would need to face the consequences because what he had done was incredibly disrespectful. Um, we sat down and we researched about the Quran. Um, we, we learned obviously that it, it is a very, very sacred text that you must wash your hands before you touch the Quran. It must be kept high. You can't just read from the Quran, um, as, as some of his friends have done. Um, and he realised at that point how massive this was. Um, he is utterly mortified. Um, he's very, very apologetic. He's very remorseful. He hasn't eaten since Wednesday afternoon when this occurred because with his autism, it's put his anxiety to a level where he is beside himself. Um, he's very, very sorry. He, he was quite happy to come here today and tell you how sorry he was. Um, and he's asked me to say that it's not just me apologising for what he's done. He wants to apologise for what he's done to each and every one of you. Um, we, we have had to call the police. He has received death threats. He has received threats that he will be beaten up if he goes back to school. He's absolutely petrified. Um, but I don't want anybody to be prosecuted um, because of the stupidity of my son and his friends. So it was more about making sure that he's safe and just having those conversations so that people understand that he is a silly 14-year-old boy who's been very disrespectful, but assures me that he will never be that disrespectful ever again. Um, going forward, I will make sure that he does more research on Islam, um, so that he has a better understanding of other people's cultures and that he can be more respectful. And I will ensure that he does that um, so that we don't have a repeat and, and that he knows how respectful he needs to be to everybody. Um, I am incredibly sorry for the hurt that he's caused. I know he has. Um, I'm very, very, very sorry for the hurt. Um, and, and I hope that you can forgive him, but I understand that what he's done is not a good thing. Uh, but thank you for letting me come in and say that to you. Thank you. Uç. Burada kilise aşevi açmış. Şu mavi yer. Ayin de yapıyor. Sabahlar ayin de yapıyor. Ve hocam yanlarına gitti. Bir Mustafa hocam. Bir bak. Hocam yanlarına gitti. Hocam ne evet gördün hocam. orada? Ne hissettin? Ee, yanlarına gittiğimizde tabii çok e, böyle elimizi Hı. öpecek derecede mütevazili, mütevazili e, yumuşak e, davranıp insanları kendilerine çekmek için olanca gayretiyle çaba sarf ediyorlar. Her sabah bir de hocam şu yani, çevreyi komple temizlik yapıyorlar. Mıntık yapıyorlar. Millete ismerelim, şirin görünmek için. Ismarlayalım. Aman gelin ne olur gitmeyin. Sürekli Allah böyle Allah bir insanları arkadaşlar, çekme hali var. Özel eğitilmiş özel eğitimli, eğitimli, eğitimli arkadaşlar kilisenin elemanları özel eğitilmiş arkadaşlar burada ve insanlara çok yumuşak tevazu davranıyorlar ve kendilerine güzel çekiyorlar. Ki seçilmiş, o yüzden eğitilmiş. bizim burada olmamız lazım. İsmail Han, özellikle hocaların buraya gelmesine inan çok İstirham büyük etkisi ediyoruz. var. Tamam. Yani hocalarımız mutlaka buraları boş bırakmasın. Böyle değişmeli. Remember how Muhammad married Aisha when she was six years old? Well, let me tell you a little secret. It's not true. 
I got a really interesting email this morning about this, so I thought I'd address it, because it's not only Islamophobic, it's also been used in political systems to justify the lowering of the legal age of marriage. But let me tell you something about Islam. Unless it's in the Quran, then it doesn't escape infallibility. Quran alone is the infallible word of God. And in the Quran, marriage is only legitimate when it is entered by two consenting adults. And more importantly, it's the woman who gets to choose her spouse. Now, in a time like the 5th and 6th century in the Saudi Arabian desert, there was no such thing as a birth registry or celebrating a birthday. So people just basically estimated their own age. A person was considered an adult once they passed through puberty. And by the way, 500 years after Muhammad, that was still true in Europe, which is why it was okay for the 35-year-old King John of England to marry an 11-year-old Isabella of Angoulême. But here's the thing. This image of a corrupt, sinful, philanderous Muhammad fits perfectly inside a broader Islamophobic Orientalism. It's giving crusades. The Catholic Church did everything in its power to paint this image of a sinful, lustful, false prophet. They had done all the work to create this immaculate image of a perfect Messiah, Jesus Christ, Son of God. The guy was born of a virgin, for God's sake. So by extension, the religion of this sinful philanderer, Islam, stood no chance against the religion of the archetype of celibacy. So ultimately, we get these ideas from threatened Christian patriarchs. But let me tell you some more interesting stuff about Muhammad that we actually know. Because it's really funny how we always rush to talk about how he married a six-year-old, but we never talk about his first wife, the one we actually know was his wife, and who, very interestingly, was the first Muslim. Her name was Khadija, and she was a business owner when Muhammad still had nothing in his own name. She had heard of his journey into the cave. He had come to her seeking solace after the vision. She was 15 years his senior. He was 25, she was 40. And she proposed to him. She actually sent her friend to ask him if he would be okay being with a woman who had her own money. It was a whole thing. It's super cute. Go read about it. But let's circle back to Aisha. Because when Khadija passed away, Muhammad was heartbroken. But he was friends with a man named Abu Bakr who had a daughter that was coming of age. And because marriage in those days typically served political and social functions, Muhammad was wed to Aisha to solidify his relationship with Abu Bakr. And guess what? Aisha was no wallflower. She led troops in battle and was known for her temper and her mischievous sense of humor. She was a stateswoman, scholar, mufti, and judge. And this whole Islamophobic narrative that paints her as some kind of victim is honestly just an insult to one of the most powerful women in Islam. Aisha. Aisha. This is the most remarkable story. It, it, it almost boggles the mind. Uh, can you talk us through exactly the timeline of events here? How did these boys end up suspended? So apparently one of the boys was dared to bring a Quran into school uh, by his friends while they were playing uh, some kind of PlayStation game online. And once he'd brought the Quran into school, teenage boys, as teenage boys naturally do, they didn't take 100% care of it. It got a bit scuffed. It was dropped on the floor, apparently. And after that, rumors spread that they'd burned the Quran, that they'd spat on the Quran, that they'd torn it up in front of other kids. So there was tremendous pressure from uh, local Muslims, from a local mosque, from uh, elected politicians, including Councillor Usman Ali. And I think it's very necessary context that just up the road from Wakefield in Batley two years ago, uh, a teacher was forced into hiding for showing his uh, pupils a cartoon of Muhammad. And he's still in hiding, such as the level of intimidation that he faced. I mean, this was shortly after Samuel Patti was killed uh, by a murderer in France for a similar incident of showing a picture of Muhammad. So there are real fears, not just that the school is going to, you know, it's going to get a bad reputation, it's going to get a bad offset result. There are real fears for the physical safety of the students who receive various death threats, uh, for the teachers, for uh, everybody involved. So, sadly, uh, the authorities didn't have the courage to stand up to these bullies, and instead they decided to throw these kids under the bus. Uh, this is extraordinary. It seems that threats of violence are winning out over, over reason, over secularism, over liberalism, really, when it comes to many parts of our country at the moment. 
Looking at what happened in the community reaction, there was this most extraordinary public meeting that you wrote about where uh, the, the, one of the boys, one of the four boys' mother was brought in uh, to speak to a, a, a, a, a, I believe it was a religious gathering. She was asked to wear a headscarf at that meeting. And she sat there looking terrified as these uh, religious leaders almost berated her for having the temerity to have a son who scuffed a book. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the man who was speaking at that time was a local councillor. He wasn't, uh, he was an elected official. I think even previously a conservative official. Now he's an independent councillor uh, who, with a, a member of the police sitting next to him, was allowed to behave as if the ultimate, you know, the most biggest con uh, controversy here was that four boys had been allowed to slightly mishandle a book. And uh, not that they'd received threats of death, not that uh, the school had been intimidated. Uh, and that that was all, you know, just the unfortunate, maybe regrettable, but understandable byproduct of this biggest scandal, which was just teenage boys acting like teenage boys. And I think we really have to stand up to this, you know, this sneaking premise that the ultimate uh, scandal is someone being given offence and not threats against our institutions, threats against uh, people's safety, threats against... My father, the Ustaz Dr. علي جمعة مفتي ديار المصرية أثارت فتواك الأخيرة عن التي قلت فيها أنه المرأة يمكنها أن تنجب بعد أربع سنوات من سفر أو وفاة زوجها ولا تكون زانية في هذه الحالة دلوقتي افرض فرضنا أن شخص مسافر إلى دولة ما سعودية غيره غيره لمدة أربع سنوات لم يعاشر زوجته ولم يجمعها ولم يلمسها من اصله رجع بعد اربع سنين لا امراته حامل قال لها ايه ده قلت ده ابنك هل يصدقها جاوبني في الشرع بيقول له اه صدقها صدقها نعم هذه فتوى الامام الشافعي م. والامام مالك م. والامام احمد بن حنبل والاوزاعي والطبري <تصفيق> وكل ائمه الاسلام أه. وهي فتوى صحيحه 100% وتدل على إنسانية هذا الفقه وعلو قدره لامرأة يموت عنها زوجها فإذ بها تأتي بولد بعد أربع سنوات الست جابت ده بعد أربع سنوات يبقى أتهمها بالزنا أدي بقى كانت الفتوى وأدي الناس اللي عايزين يعترضوا يبقى يعترضوا على الأئمة فيما يقولون بيقولوا لا طيب قال لي ما, ما, ما, ما, ما عملش دي للزنا قال لأن الحدود تضرأ بالشبهات قال له فين الشبهة اللي فيها يعني قال يمكن هي الست دي اللي من الستة مليار بني آدم راجل وست وثلاثة مليار ست موجودين يمكن هي الحالة الوحيدة اللي كده اللي موافقة لما أخبر به مالك والشافعي وغيره هي دي هي دي في واحد بيقول لي لا تعال من دي نقول لها زانية وخلاص يعني احنا هنخسر حاجة قلت له اخصى عليك اخصى عليك اخصى عليك اه والله اخصى عليك اه دي الست دي شريف اه قال لي انت مقتنع بكده في قلبك يا مولانا ان الست شريفه وهي جايبه الواد بعد اربع سنين أوه. قلت له الشرع بيقول لي لازم تقتنع بكده واسكت ولم لسانك أوه. بدل ما هيبقى فيك شأن اخر طيب قال لي بقى انت ما انتش متاكد ان دي زانيه وانها تستحق الرجل قلت له اسكت بدل الشرع ما يضربك 80 جلده في ظهرك عشان انت بتلسن على الستات أوه. دين الله ان 13 شهر معتمد على العلم وان اربع سنين معتمد على التقوى. يفهم الناس كده. الفتوى دي الذ فتوى موجوده لانها ترجمت عن الفكر الاسلامي وموقف الاخرين من الانسانيه. وبينت ان الفقه الاسلامي عالي القدر.